everyone and welcome to episode 140 of the Giddy Knits podcast. Today is Thursday the 28th of March and as always I am Helen and I am coming to you from Dundee in Scotland and this is my crafty podcast. It's been a while. Now I know on the last episode I did warn you it was going to be a while um, so at least this time you were prepared that there was going to be a gap um, but I am very glad to be back recording again just, just before the end of March. <laughs> it's nice to not have missed a month entirely. Um, if you are new and you've never seen my podcast before, my, my, my videos before, then welcome. Thank you for coming and checking them out. I am Helen, as I said, I am the dyer behind Giddy Yarns, which is a hand-dyed yarn company, and in this podcast I chat mostly about whatever projects I have been working on, um, whether that is knitting, crochet, occasionally a bit of cross stitch, um, and things like that. Um, I have a lot to chat about this episode. Um, so, and I'm feeling like my introduction is different because it's been a while. <laughs> um, so hello, hello and welcome. Welcome everyone who is a regular viewer. Thank you for coming back. I know there's been a little bit of a gap. I'm looking at my show notes and apparently the last time I sat down and recorded was Thursday the 8th of February. So we're nearly two months to be honest. Um, but as I'm sure many of you know, February and March have been exceptionally busy for me. Um, I was away for a lot of February, we had a lovely holiday, we went um, up to Aviemore for the kind of, the February half term equivalent, we don't get a week in Scotland, we get a long weekend, um, but we went up to Aviemore for that which was lovely and then as soon as I got back from Aviemore I was straight down to Kent um, to Jem of the Little Grey Girl and I helped her for a week over um, Unravel Yarn Festival, I helped her vending there and stayed a few days either side as well um, and that was lovely. And then I got back home and I was home for maybe a week and a half and then it was East Anglia Yarn Festival where I was vending so I was away to that um, and then it's just been a case of catching up really so it has been busy. I've got quite a few things I want to chat about at the beginning of this episode so I think what I'm going to do this week is I'm just going to tell you these are the following sections that will be in the episode and what I will do as I generally do anyway but underneath the video you'll find timestamps for each of those sections so if there's sections you want to skip then you can if you want to get straight to the finished objects or whatever you can do that um, and it's usually it links so you can just click on that timestamp and it will straight take you straight to that kind of section but we're going to start with a little chat about a brand new make along that is starting on the 1st of April we are going to chat a little bit about my studio and what's happening with that. Um, we have got, I say we, the royal we, I, <laughs> I have got a finished object to share. Then we're going to have our usual what's in the basket where I share all of my current works in progress. Um, then I'm going to have a little bit of an update on my bingo board. That is our current make along that we've got running. Um, so I'll have a little bit of an update on my bingo board um, for kind of March and how I'm doing for January, February, March. Um, I've then got a fair bit of yarny goodness to share because I've been to a couple of shows and some clubs have come in and things like that. Um, and then I will finish up with shop news. Um, I'm just going to talk about the clubs. I'm also going to reveal my adv advent theme. Um, so you might want to stay tuned for that. Um, but that's about it, I think. That, that's what we've got going on. Um, I'm aware it's going to be quite a kind of chat-heavy front end of the podcast um, because I need to get through some make-along information and I've got quite a lot to share about the studio <laughs> and what's happening there. Um, it's been a journey, let's just say that. Um, so yeah, if you're not fussed on the chatty stuff and you just want to get straight to the knitting content, then skip to the finished objects and that's kind of where that starts. Um, but right, first of all, let's start with make-alongs. Um, so I mentioned very briefly our bingo crafting challenge um, and I'm going to update you on my progress later in the episode, but just so anyone who's new knows, I am running a, a fun make-along this year called the Bingo Crafting Challenge. There are um, bingo grids that are available, um, I'll, pop up, I'll pop one up here, a blank one up here, you can get um, these on, uh, what am I saying, linked underneath the video is a link to a Google 
drive folder where you can get hold of the bingo boards, basically. Or you can create your own. There's no pressure to use mine. It was just to make it easier for you. But basically you fill it in with nine challenges to yourself that you want to complete during this year, whether they are knitting, crochet, or general crafty goals. Um, mine are specifically, actually no, mine are knitting and crochet. I kind of wish I'd thought about it a bit more before I did them and put some cross stitch or something in there as well, but I didn't. This is my, this is that, 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 well, I'll show you my board later, but my board is set and it's fine. Um, but if you want to join along, it's never too late to join in. Obviously, the later in the year you join in, the less time you have to complete your challenges. Um, but basically, you set nine goals and the aim is to have those goals completed by the end of the year. Um, be realistic with them, think about what you can actually achieve, it's meant to be fun so don't pressurise yourself too much, Not nothing too big a challenge, but also if there's one you're not going to manage then it, it doesn't matter, it's not the end of the world, it, you know, you're not going to lose. <laughs> um, I am going to say halfway through the year I am going to give an opportunity for you to kind of jazz up your grid a little bit if there's ones, if there's goals um, kind of six months in that you really really think to yourself actually I'm really not going to achieve that now then I'm going to give you a chance in kind of beginning of July probably um, to change up your grids a little bit and introduce some new things because over the space of six months like the things we want to knit on can often change um, and our priorities back in January are not necessarily our priorities come the summer um, so that's the plan Anyway, so that is that one. That is running all year and I will be drawing, drawing prizes at, well, probably at the beginning of next year, actually, because you'll need to have your kind of completed grids in by the end of um, December and then we'll draw prizes in January. I am also going to draw prizes from the chatter thread. For those of us who don't, I say those of us because it's likely I'm going to be one of them, for those of us who don't manage to complete our grids fully by the end of the year, um, there'll still be chances to win a prize, so don't worry about that. Um, but we have a new make along starting on the 1st of April. So myself and Fran from Franny Do Makes have teamed up to run a spring shawlathon. So this is a make along that basically revolves around shawls. It started because a few of us in the Discord group were chatting about wanting to knit Vertices Unite shawls. I want to knit another one. Um, I'm going to knit it. I haven't drawn the yarn out yet. I haven't quite planned my colours, but I'm going to knit it out of some of the Spectrum Fibre colours I got from last year's Yarn Club. Um, and I know there were a few other people who were like, oh yes, yes, I want to knit one too. Um, so that's kind of where the idea started and then Fran and I have had a little chat and we decided actually we're going to make it wider so it's not going to be specific to one shawl project it's just going to be a general spring shawl along uh, shawl a -thon. so any shawl you fancy it doesn't matter how much yarn it uses as long as it is a shawl and it can be wrapped around your neck that's fine. We're going to say it has to be a new cast on, so nothing cast on before the 1st of April. Um, however, we're running it for three months. We're going to run it until the 30th of June and you don't need to finish your shawl. We're going to have basically one thread for everything and prizes will be drawn from that thread. So the more you engage, the more photos you share, the more chatter you join in and things like that, the more chance you'll have of um, being entered for prizes or for winning prizes. Um, but there is no pressure with this one. It's meant to just be fun and relax. There is no pressure to finish your shawl by the end of June. If you do, and if the make along motivates you to get something finished, then fantastic. I'm sure a number of you will. Um, and I'd like to think I might, but I know myself and nah, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that's the plan. Um, I'm looking down at my notes to try and think if I've forgotten to say anything. I will put all the details underneath the video so that you can see it there. I will also set up a thread in the Discord group with all the details in and in the Ravelry group. So in terms of my entries, for me, you can enter in my Discord group and you'll be able to enter on Ravelry in my Ravelry group as well. Um, and then I believe um, Fran is going to have um, 
her, she's got a Ravelry group that she's going to be using and she's also going to have a hashtag. Oh no, she's, I think she's going to ask people to tag her on Instagram. Um, we're having issues with hashtags on Instagram because unfortunately Instagram has stopped showing you everything within a hashtag. Um, so I can't guarantee that I'm not missing people with entries on Instagram, which is a real shame because it's quite a nice way for people to enter. Um, but you can tag people on Instagram. That won't work for me, unfortunately, because I get tagged quite regularly on Instagram, which I love when you're sharing your projects and other things like that, which means that it would be a real mission for me to kind of work out which tags are related to the knit along and which tags are related to whatever. Um, so for me, it's just going to be Discord and Ravelry. Um, but check out Fran's podcast. Um, I'm sure she'll talk about it in the next podcast she puts up, possibly. Um, and... I'm sure she'll tell you there where you can enter with her. <laughs> but you can enter in all the places um, for more chances to win prizes. I don't know what the prizes are going to be yet. We'll work that out nearer. We'll work that out nearer the end of June, as is often the case, because I'm not prepared for these things. Um, but there will be prizes. So I hope you're as excited about that as me. I'm really looking forward to digging out all of the Spectrum Fibres yarns and picking the five colours that I'm going to use. There's definitely a really bright pink which I think I'm going to have as one of the smaller striped sections and I'm going to use the bright pink as the border because the Vertices Unite has a I-cord border around the outside and I think that would look really fun. Um, so yeah I'm excited to dig those out I just need to find some time. Um, hopefully hopefully over Easter weekend or thing I don't know. Time doesn't exist in my life at the moment um, but anyway that is the new make along. <laughs> um, so come and chat over in Discord about it, come and chat over in Ravelry about it. By the time this video goes up I will have put posts in those two places um, and yeah come and tell me what you're going to make. Now it's a spring shawl -a -thon, is what we're calling it. I know I keep referring to it as a knit along, it is not purely knitting. You are by all means welcome to crochet a shawl, that is absolutely fine. I should be calling it a make along, it's just a slip of the tongue. Um, generally I refer to all of our um, alongs as make alongs because crochet is always welcome and always included. Um, I just I'm tired and my brain isn't working properly so I kept saying knit along. I think mostly because the pattern I'm knitting is a knitted project so I'm thinking of it as a knit along because I'm going to knit along um, but please feel free to crochet along. Anyway <laughs> shall we move on? The next bit is also very chatty. <laughs> I'm gonna have a quick sip of my squash. I don't have a cup of tea I've already finished it. I'm recording a bit later in the day um, to when I would normally record because I had quite a bit of dyeing to get done today and I needed to get that out of the way first before I could sit down and record. It's also why my hands are funny colours um, but I guess you're, most of you are used to that by now. So the big thing I wanted to sit and chat about and I'm going to update you on quite a lot of stuff here is the studio and what's happening with the studio because I know a number of you out there are going to be sitting there thinking she's still not in the studio it's the end of March and she's still not in the studio what's happening this is this is this is this is not right and no it's not right it's not right at all um so I got back from East Anglia Yarn Festival so just before I left for East Anglia Yarn Festival um hang on let's no for anyone that's new let's go right back in September, <laughs> on the 23rd of September to be precise, I went and looked at a rental property in Dundee um, that I thought would make a really good studio. It was an old escape rooms um, and it had two floors, it was quite big, it had the option for kind of me to run customer facing stuff um, and it seemed really exciting and promising. Um, then the landlord said he needed to do some work um, I, they wanted to strip out the entirety of the upstairs. I spe specifically said to them that I needed the downstairs stripped out entirely. That needed to be one big room for it to work for me. The upstairs was fine as the layout was at the moment. That was okay. Um, I would happily do a lot of the stuff that needed doing upstairs, but the downstairs needed to be one big space. Um, and they said, yep, yeah, okay, that's fine. Not a problem. So, they took their time finding people and it got to kind of just after Christmas and I was at the point of kind of saying, well, this is ridiculous, I don't know what's happening. So I contacted them in early January with, and I was told that all the work should be finished by the end of January. 
So we said, right, okay, that's brilliant. They sent me the heads of terms and everything like that. And we started looking at it all. Um, and I went at the end of January, we went to see it only to find out, I'm saying is they're getting this right, it's the end of January or the end of February, yeah. So no, we went up at the end of January to be told that the work had started but wouldn't be finished and everything was happening. And then it was all supposed to be finished, we then, so we, 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 were, we got there with the lettings agent only to find that yes, all the work had been finished upstairs, um, apart from the windows, but downstairs was still a horror escape room and they'd done nothing with it. Um, and I think this was the end of January, I think. Um, anyway, I then went back, we then went back and said, right, okay, that's fine. Like take, it's not a problem. The work should be finished in the next two weeks. Um, and that's fine, you can come back then. <sighs> it wasn't finished. So this was, mid-February and we were expecting the work to be finished um, by, I can't quite remember the timeline of everything now I'm thinking about it, but anyway, basically I contacted them March, at the beginning of March, at the end of February, we talked about it, the work hadn't been done, they were expecting it to be done in two weeks, that's when it was, it was the end of February I went back to see it. Um, the lettings agent sort of said, right, okay, that's fine, I had, I'd had the draft lease at this point, I'd had everything, nothing was signed, but I'd had everything. Then just before I went to East Anglia Yarn Festival, I got a message from the lettings agent to say that the um, landlord had finished all the work that they would be doing, but it might be worth me coming in to have a look at the finish um, and things like that, which immediately ran, rang alarm bells in my head. I was like, okay, this doesn't sound great, like, what have they left it like, what's happening, have they, anyway, so I wasn't sure, like, I had to wait, and then on the Tuesday, I got back from East Anglia Yarn Festival on the Monday evening, on the Tuesday morning, we went to have a look at it, and we got there, and it was, yeah, basically, they'd stripped out all of the horror stuff, like, all of the paraphernalia in the escape rooms downstairs, they had blocked off an entire room because they said it was too expensive to strip that out. Um, they had very roughly repainted covering the walls with black paint that haven't actually really covered up what was on the walls at all. They'd left the ceiling in an absolute state and they'd basically said that that was as much work as they would be doing, it was too expensive to do any more work, and that was how they were leaving it. What I will do quickly is I will actually pop in a couple of photographs um, to show you how they had left the downstairs area. Um, and this, bear in mind, what I had said that I needed doing for it to be viable for me was to have that whole space opened up into one big room um, they haven't opened up any of the rooms. One of the rooms has been blocked off entirely. My school alarm. One of the rooms has been blocked off entirely and the other two rooms have just been emptied, basically, and left as it was. Um, I'll pop some pictures in now. at that point I kind of said right no I can't take it like this um it's far too much work what they're expecting you know the fact that they haven't listened to what I wanted and they've just done their own thing as well despite the fact that they like that they ha we had the lease we'd literally had the draft lease we were ready to sign the lease at one point we were expecting to get it from the beginning of March and they hadn't finished the work in time anyway so at that point I walked away Tom and I went and sat in the car outside and I had a little mini breakdown, as you would, and then we thought, right, okay, we're just going to have a look and we picked our phones up and we had a little look for commercial lettings in the area to see if there was anything new that had come up um, and there was something new that had come up on an estate, the West Pit Carrow Industrial Estate, um, which is relatively close to where we live, uh, it's about five minute drive, it's really good location. Um, so I thought, do you know what? 
let's before we before we kind of officially say no because we hadn't officially said no at that point we'd told the lettings agent right okay we just need to have a think and yeah he knew <laughs> he knew he's, he, we'd met him enough times he knew um i thought right okay it's fine i will just email them and see if i can book a viewing of this in the next few days to kind of get an idea as to whether it would be a good alternative because at this point on the this was on the tuesday on the Friday, I was due to go to Jude of Stranded Dye Works. I was due to go to his studio and collect a whole load of stuff for the new studio, which I had nowhere to put anymore. Um, so that was a bit stressful. Anyway, we emailed them and hilariously, it was a different guy. It was supposed to be a different guy managing that property, but hilariously, an hour later, the lettings agent that we've been de dealing with all along emailed me back to say, yep, yeah, no problem, we can take you to view it. Um, and I literally went and saw it on the Wednesday. So this was Wednesday the... When was this? Wednesday... When did I get back from East Anglia? This would have been Wednesday the 13th of March, so two weeks ago. <laughs> I went and viewed it on the Wednesday, and it's very different. Um, so it is much smaller. It is cheaper, obviously, because it's smaller. Um, there are lots of positives about it because it's actually the estate it's on is the estate where my delivery office is, where I drop all my parcels. So that's really convenient. Um, it's five minutes from the school. It's five minutes from home. Um, it's a really, really easy location for me in terms of working and coming to and from and things like that. The only downside of it is because it's so much smaller, the likelihood pardon me, the likelihood of me being able to run retreats, the likelihood of me being able to run knit nights and stuff like that is very low. Um, I need to work out how I'm going to use the space, first of all, as to whether I might be able to do some in-person stuff. I would like to. I mean, it has the possibility space-wise that I could maybe run some small kind of private die sessions, like small groups of people could come and have little die sessions. Um, you know, I might be able to run the odd kind of craft day at a weekend maybe, but it would be a case of kind of rejigging the space slightly to make that work, to be able to do those. So we'll have to see how that works, but primarily it will be a studio, a working studio for me. Um, so yeah, but the good news, despite the chaos and the, the, the annoyance and the, and the issues I had with the previous one, the good news is that yesterday I signed the lease for the new one and I pick up the keys on Monday. So barring anything horrific, I hope nothing horrific, pays. I've paid the deposit, I've paid the fees, like nothing horrific should happen now. I'm literally picking up the keys on Monday, fingers crossed, nine o'clock on Monday morning, I will have the keys to a new studio. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a journey. It's been stressful. It's been chaotic. My next door neighbor's garage is full of stainless steel tables because I got them from Jude and I had nowhere to put them. <laughs> um, um, but we're there now. So hopefully from Monday, I will have the new studio space. It's gonna take me a little bit of while to get myself sorted and get in there because it's the beginning of the school holidays from tomorrow. Um, so we've got two weeks of school holidays and we're going away for a week of that. But by the end of April, that's my aim, is that by the end of, the April, by the end of April, I will hopefully be in there and using it from the beginning of May properly. Um, so yeah. I will um, get some proper video and stuff. In fact, I will pop in in a second. I have got a little small video. It's the wrong way round for YouTube. It's a it's a portrait video because I just recorded it to share with some friends. Um, but I will pop it in the video shortly so that you can kind of get a little feel for what the space is. Um, and then I will share more. Once I've got it next week, I will try and get some proper video recorded. I'll do a little vlog for YouTube um, and share it all with you and kind of what my plans are and how I think it will work. And then throughout April, as I go through the process of getting it ready, I will try and share various bits of video and things like that as well. So yeah, after a mission of months and months and months of waiting on this previous studio, in the space of two weeks, <laughs> I've got another one. Um, it kind of feels like it was meant to be, to be honest. There's so many positives with where this other one is. It's gonna be so much easier. Um, I was really lucky because it's actually an assignation of an existing lease, um, but the break clauses that were already in place in the existing lease were perfect for me. 
Um, cause that's one of the things I was worried about is that he was suddenly going to tell me that the existing lease was something ridiculously long and had no break clauses and that wasn't going to work. But actually I've got a break clause in two years and it's a four year contract, the four year lease that's left. Um, so it's perfect really. It's not massive. Um, yeah, I'll pop the video in. to some knitting shall we? I was hoping to have two finished objects for you this week um, but unfortunately one of them taking me a little bit longer to finish than I thought it would but I do have one finished object. I have finished my Soundwaves cowl. It has been all grafted together. Um, I shall put it on. This is a pattern by um, Ellie of Craft House Magic um, and it is a um, a tubular cowl. So you knit round and round and round and then you join it together. You are supposed to do a provisional cast on. Um, I didn't do that because I really struggle with provisional cast ons. So I actually did, um, I just cast on normally and then I knit all the whole thing and then I went back and I picked up stitches um, for where my cast on was and then I've just kitchened it, kitchenered, kitchenered, I've kitchened it together um, which I don't think the finish is actually too bad um, so there we go that's where I've kitchened it together um, yeah I'm quite pleased with it to be honest um, as you'll have known if you've watched most of if you've watched the progress of this the main pattern the original pattern the Soundwaves cowl um, has this um, textured what is it? Chevron. <laughs> it has this textured chevron pattern on it. Um, I knit a good few sections in this as you can see there and then I just kept making mistakes and I didn't have the brain space for it so the rest of the cowl is just plain but I quite like it actually because it just it feels like it's got like a, a featured panel and actually when I'm holding it that you can see it goes from there to there so it's not quite half but it is like having just a little featured a featured textural bit um so it works quite nicely you could actually make it could you make it a three loop oh you could make it a three loop cowl um it's just about cozy enough i'm pretty sure the pattern is written for various weights of yarn i used um the advent calendar from ellie again craft house magic um this was the advent calendar that was released the same year as the pattern so it was designed for the pattern um and i had the 10 gram advent so this is 24 10 gram minis um, um but i think it was written with more minis in mind as well so you could do it even longer or you could do it shorter or there's usually lots of options in ellie's patterns um so yeah one finished object um which I'm very very happy with it's nice to have this off the needles although I will say I really enjoyed having a mindless kind of round and round project so um I'm wondering whether I need to start something else similar so that's my finished object oh I have got one other finished object oh I don't know where it is um I will pop a picture up I'll pop a picture on the screen <laughs> my other finished object um it's nothing fancy I finished a sample sock um, so I wanted something that would work to show off all of the Peter Pan colourways um, but show them off in one small project so I used the 20 gram minis and I just made a little sample sock so you get a little section of each colourway and it kind of shows them off um, so that works quite nicely. I haven't done a pair I've just done the single sock um, but hey it's another finished object. 
keeping an eye on the time because I've got 20 minutes until I need to go and get the kids. <laughs> so let's move on shall we to what's in the basket. Now the big first thing that is in the basket is the project that I was really really hoping I would have finished for this episode but unfortunately I haven't quite managed to because the border is taking longer than I thought. Um, but that is my cosy memories blanket. I have finished the all the squares. <clears throat> I'm not sure how I'm going to show this to you because I can't actually go back at all and I can't move you forward either because there's boxes behind you. Um, but this has been a this has been a, such a long time project. Um, I am curious if anyone can remember when I first started this. Um, it must have been easily five years ago. So the podcast has been going for seven years. I started it when, I started it in, two, when was Jasper born? Jasper was born in 2016. So I started it in 2017 when Jasper was three months old in the January. Um, and he will be eight this year. Um, so yeah, it's seven, seven years. So probably about five years in the making at least. Um, I don't know when I actually started this, but it's been, it's been a long, long time. Um, I reckon you're looking at probably five years. Um, so yeah, I have finished all the squares. I'm trying to do this without dropping everything. I've got my yarn there. I am doing an I-cord border, which is why it's taking so long. Um, so as you can see, I've picked this gr this blue. This is actually um, dyed by Henny Penny Makes, Erin of Henny Penny Makes. A number of years ago, we did a little collaboration where we basically picked three dyes and we both dyed a colorway using those three dyes. Um, and this was the one that she dyed. Um, so I'm using that for the border. I started, I started just there. I've done the whole of this short end um, and I am starting to work my way, trying not to drop the ball of yarn, I'm starting to work my way down the long end. Um, so yeah, it's a bit slower than I thought it was going to be, um, but it's a nice and easy mindless kind of task to do, so I don't really mind. Um, but I am looking forward to kind of showing this off properly when it's properly fully finished and it's going to be I haven't weighed it yet I really want to weigh it and see how weighty it is um but I'm restricting myself I'm like I'm restraining myself until it's finished um and then I'm going to weigh it but we're so close we are so close this has taken up quite a lot of my time over the last um month or so so my other projects haven't seen masses of progress but in the basket I do have four other projects First of all, I've got my Christmas socks that I'm still working on. Um, and yeah, you're not going to see a lot of progress. I can't actually remember where I was when I last showed you these. I think I'd maybe knit the rib. Um, but I am working down the leg. These are just plain vanilla socks, except I did um, a faux cable for the rib. This is the second sock. As I'm sure you will remember having seen the first sock completed. Um, and I'm knitting these out of the Corner of Craft Chromatic Yarns, um, Hannah's colourways that she did for her weekly advent this year. So this one is called Arcane Gate and it pairs with that lovely purple, lovely purple mini. Um, but yeah, they've not seen, they've not seen masses of progress to be honest um, because Although they're vanilla and they're round and round and they're quick, the one vanilla project that I have been reaching for when I've not been working on the blanket is my So Faded sweater. Um, so this is a project that I've been working on for a little while now. Um, I'm using, so it's a So Faded sweater by Andrea Mowry is the name of the pattern, but I'm not fading it, I'm doing it as stripes and I'm using yarn from Pixie Yarns, um, which I actually picked up at East Anglia last year um, and it was like a pack with four blues and four pinks and I'm striping them. Um, so this is where we are so far, if I show you the back, this is the back. Um, so I'm into the second section of pinks um, the little rubber ducky there shows you where I was, oh, except you can't see it. 
there we go the little rubber ducky there shows you where I was the last time I showed you so I've done two pink stripes since then um so not masses but progress is progress is getting made on this I haven't quite worked out where I want the body to stop I'm thinking I want it to be relatively cropped not ridiculously long because I'm thinking it'll be one that works quite well under a pair of dungarees um so I don't know I've not got too much longer to go on the body I don't think maybe another another three or four let's see where is it sitting at the moment it's sitting kind of there maybe I want it to hit my actual kind of the top of my hips my actual waist so maybe another three inches we'll see three 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 or four inches I reckon maybe um so not too bad but it's really nice because it is just mindless round and round and round there's no body shaping and um I'm just doing 10 rows of each color which is relatively easy to keep track of um so yeah that has been that's kind of been my go-to my go-to project um so that is that one and then I have got two blankets new blanket cast ons that you've seen before that I was going to share I will start with the one that has got the least progress but I wanted to show you the yarn um, because I can't show you it in yarny goodness because I've already caked it up and started the squares um, but this is the yarn from the um, secret treasure box blanket club from um, Suzanne at Green Lambkin Yarns um, and each month you get four DK minis I've gone with the sparkle base um, so January's minis were these ones here um, so those ones those ones those ones and that one and what I'm doing is I'm attempting I've lost a square I oh, know it is in there I'm attempting to do two squares out of each colour um, so I'll show you the new colours because I've done two of the colours so this is one of the colours that's such a pretty colour I've not not started that one yet and this is another of the colours <clears throat> and then I have finished four of the other squares so what I'm attempting to do and I managed it with these squares is I'm doing one solid granny square like this and then I'm doing one normal granny square like this um, and my aim is to get both of those out of a mini it it's tight it uses up pretty much every yarn one of them not these ones one of the other ones I have got like two trebles instead of three trebles in the final stitch <laughs> but it's fine um so there's that one as well um so they're the ones that I've managed to get done up but I'm really enjoying these it's really nice um if there's a square I don't manage to do or if there's a slightly dodgy one where I've not quite got the right number of trebles in each thing I'm not too worried um it'll still work as a blanket it'll be fine so that is that one and then the final one I wanted to share is um my just double check the time no we're all right we've got 10 minutes <laughs> is my um rainbow blanket this is using my club um so all of the clubs are shipped this morning um but if you are still trying to avoid spoilers for my rainbow club then skip to the um timestamp that i stick stick on the street on stick oh my goodness skip to the timestamp that i stick on the screen um so that you don't get to do any spoilers but i have only finished january's colors um so this is i don't know which is the front and which is the back this is January. I'm doing a granny ripple blanket. Um, I haven't got a pattern so much. I followed a tutorial online. If you just search granny ripple blanket on YouTube, you'll find tutorials. Um, but that is all of January added. I have got February and March set aside. I just haven't got around to caking them up yet. Um, so it's going to be kind of a lap blanket size. It's quite a small blanket. I'm using the 20 gram DK. Um, but yeah that's how it's looking so far January was the reds and then we go into oranges for February and into yellows for March and April is coming up and we'll hopefully see a hint of green because I'm bored of yellow um, <laughs> um, so that is that one as well and that's everything that's in the basket at the moment I that did touch my cross stitch a little bit and there's so many other projects that I really want to kind of get on with but um 
the blanket was my big focus because I had quite a lot of yarn come in in March as you will discover shortly um, and I was hoping to get a really big project finished in March as well to kind of counteract it slightly um, but unfortunately that hasn't quite worked out <laughs> um, but it's fine it'll balance off later in the year I'm sure um, so yes let's move on what was my next thing bingo board update for March so I thought seeing as it was the end of the quarter I'd have a little chat about how my bingo board is doing um I have I'm just looking at my bingo board which is on the wall over there so on my bingo board I have got more yarn out than in I'll pop it up on the screen more yarn out than in finish a blanket finish two garments finish a six month plus work in progress uh, knit six or twelve pairs of socks um complete the Grimblewood gnome collection um I can't read my handwriting keep up with a simple knitting journal um and complete an advent project and also design a sock pattern so how am I doing right well more yarn out than in currently not at the moment I am sitting at um adding up March in March I had 275 grams go out um which is not bad but I had 940 grams come in um so March I was at two, 665 grams in um as a kind of whole um which puts us at so far for 2024 it puts us at 805 grams in in total um so eight eight skeins of yarn more than I've knit basically um so that's that one um <clears throat> Finish a blanket, I am very, very close. That will be finished in April, so that is a square that we can tick off. Um, finish two garments, no, but I am, I'm getting relatively close with my So Faded. I have yarn caked up for a Lento, which I'm gonna cast on at some point. Um, and I have a couple of other garments on the horizon that I would like to cast on. And we're not even halfway through the year. We're a quarter of the way through the year, so I feel like I'm on track for that one. Um, finish a six months plus work in progress. Now that has been completed because I finished my mild magic shawl earlier in the year. Um, knit six or 12 pairs of socks. Do you know what? I don't know how many socks I've knit this year. Let's have a look in the box of socks, shall we? Living up here at the moment. I have a feeling it might only be two pairs, but we will see. It is, it's two pairs. We have finished um, a pair of socks with Craft House Magic yarn and we have finished my Felici Rainbow yarn. So that is it. But I do have another two pairs of socks on, the, three, three pairs of socks on the needles at the moment. Two of those pairs are second socks. Um, so that's promising. That's not too bad. And actually, as I said, six, I would be happy with six pairs and I've knit two. So I'm a third of the way through that and we're not even a third of the way through the year. So that's fine. Um, Grimblewood Gnomes, I've not knit any of those yet this year, but they are relatively quick projects. So once I get started on them, I think we'll be all right. Um, keeping up with a simple knitting journal. Yes, so far that is what I've done. And yep, I've learned from the last few months and I'm gonna change up the way I do it going forward into April. Um, whereas before I was using a whole page, I haven't decorated this one yet, but for before I was using a whole page for my in versus out and then a whole page for my finishes and I don't think I really need that. So for April, I'm gonna do it like this. So I've got half a page, if it'll focus, half a page for my in versus out at the top and then my finishes can go down the bottom. Um, but I am keeping up with that, so that counts. So that's good, so far so good. Complete an advent project. Now, I've obviously completed the um, Samway's Cowl, which was an advent project, but that I did say at the beginning of the year that that wouldn't count because it was so close to being finished. What I actually want to do is start one of the many advents that I have sitting around my house that haven't been started and complete an advent project with that. Um, so I think that's something I need to sit down in the next couple of months and really have a think about what project I want to start, which advent I'm gonna use and crack on with it. 
And then the final thing is to design a sock pattern. Now, this is possibly one that I may change in July. I'm not sure. Um, just my confidence with designing patterns and knowing how to write the heel and like not wanting to just steal a heel from somebody else's pattern, but not quite knowing how to actually write it myself. Like my, it's a confidence thing and I'm not 100% sure whether that's something I'm gonna achieve this year with the studio and with everything else that's gonna be going on. So that may be one that I change up come um, July when I get the chance to change. Um, so yeah, that is that. Now, I need to go and get the kids. It is five to three. So I think what I will do is I will leave everything set up. Once the kids are home, I will be back and we will carry on with some yarny goodness and then we will finish up with some shop news. I have a fair amount of lovely yarny goodness to share with you um, from various bits and pieces. So, um, I will be back shortly. For you, it'll be no time at all. It'll literally be like a snap of the fingers and I'll be back. Um, but for me, it will be probably about, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. It's pouring with rain. I'm gonna drive to get the kids. Although my car is in the garage because um, it was making funny sounds. Um, me and cars, it's, it's, it's a struggle. Um, so I've got Tom's car. So I don't really like driving Tom's car, but oh well, needs must. Um, and I will see you all very shortly. Okay. I am back. It has been closer to 50 minutes than half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, and I have gained an extra child, but it's fine. Um, if there is now background noise or distractions or disruptions, um, then apologies. But yeah, I do have my two children plus an extra child in the house. Um, but hopefully they will entertain themselves while I get this finished off. Um, but yeah, they're very excited because it's officially the Easter holidays, officially the school holidays. Um, so they've got no more school for two weeks. <laughs> where were we? Where were we? Yarny goodness. That's where we were. I have got a fair amount of yarny goodness to share with you. As I said, I had, I'm going to double check because I've forgotten what numbers I said. I had 940 grams of yarn come in during March. And I think I've actually also got another 200 and something grams that came in in February that you've not seen yet or something like that anyway, I don't know. So there is a fair amount of yarn here to show you. We are gonna start off with something I'm very excited that I managed to get hold of because I missed it and I am so pleased to now have some. I managed to pick this up from somebody's D stash, but that is a set of the 13 days of Halloween Wednesday kit from Beehive Yarns, which is this gorgeous set of 13 mini skeins. Um, I've no idea what I'm gonna do with this. Um, maybe some kind of cowl, I think. Oh, I could maybe use this for like another infinity cowl. That would be really nice. And maybe I could stripe the sections for the fade into each other and just do like one big long loop. There's probably about the same amount of yarn. I think there's 260 grams of yarn in here and I use 230 grams for my other cowl. So that could work, couldn't it? And then it would be really simple and really mindless and I would actually work on it and yeah, maybe we'll do that. It would also look gorgeous because it's a lovely fade. So maybe that's, that's a project idea, isn't it? Um, so yeah, it is 13 20 gram mini skeins. I got, I managed to pick it up in the four ply base, uh, which is just the normal kind of merino nylon sock base. And I'm really, really excited about that because I missed the original one. And then, sorry, crinkles everywhere. I missed the original release of it. And then um, she did a pre-order. Oh no, did she do a pre-order or did she sell the spares? I can't remember anyway. And I got, I went on for that and I, I, I missed them. Um, but I managed to pick some up from a friend's D stash. So that's quite exciting. I am all out of breath from doing the school run and panicking and rushing around and gaining children. <laughs> and then, I also have um, a lovely little set. So I picked up, um, I ordered the Valentine's sock box from um, Jem at the Little Grey Girl. I went for her stripes and I have actually got the DK base um, and this was the stripes. So these are her Valentine's stripes. I know Jem is hoping to do more stripes um, so I will send you in her direction because her stripes are gorgeous and I know I'm not doing stripes this year um, So if you're looking for another dyer who's hopefully going to be doing some more stripes this year Then go and have a little look at gems. This is the vintage Valentine's colorway 
it's really pretty. Um, I've never knit DK socks, um, so I'm hoping to give that a go. If you've got any recommendations for a good DK sock pattern that would work well with um, self-striping, then please let me know in the comments down below. Um, and it also came with um, a little set of little set of heart uh, needle stoppers as well which is really cute. I didn't get the bag option, I just went for a yarn only option this time round, um, but the fabric for the bag was really cute. Right, what else do we have? So, that was all East Anglia, that was all East Anglia. Okay, so I'm going to share another club. Um, so this is the February club from Wildflower Yarns, which is her Myths and Legends club, I think it's called. Um, Myths and Magic Club and February was inspired by Pixies. So that is the was the inspiration picture there that she sent out. I love that she sends out a card with the pictures on. I think that's really cute because I'm definitely going to use these for something at some point. I've saved the other one. Um, it came with some lovely little um, kind of resin stitch markers which are super pretty. And this is the yarn. I suspect that's going to give you kind of a micro striping pooling effect. I love this teal. Um, and I think that's going to make a really pretty pair of socks. I've gone for the sparkle base because I do love a bit of sparkle. Um, and this one is, yeah, it just says pixies on it. Um, so that is that one. I'm going to get the whole year of this club, I think. Um, so it will be one of those ones that in the future I will knit it up. Although I do need to get on with knitting up some of my previous clubs. Although the Spectrum Fibres one from last year is five skeins of that are going into a Vertices Unite very soon. So that's not too bad. Right, and then I went to East Anglia Yarn Festival, obviously, and I spent money. I didn't actually buy anything at Unravel because both Gem and I had rotten colds all weekend and I just didn't have the energy to go and look around, which was a shame. I just spent most of my time on the stall and I think I looked around my room and that was kind of it. But also I wasn't earning at East Anglia, uh, at Unravel, whereas I was earning at East Anglia, so it was, it was easier. Um, I actually only purchased two of these. Yeah, I only purchased two of these, the rests were swaps. One of the perks of being a yarn dyer at a um, show where you know other yarn dyers and things is that often um, when you kind of go up to say, to, to, to buy something, that a lot of people will say, oh actually do you fancy a swap? And we swap yarn instead of purchasing, which is quite nice. So the first swap I did was with Hannah at Corner of Craft and Chromatic Yarns because I had to pick up a copy of copy. Um, I had to pick up a skein of one of her Stargy Valley colorways. How cool are these labels? I love that she's done special labels. And these are Maya Lewis's Lucky Shorts. Um, I, I've tried Stargy Valley. It's not story driven enough for me. It's a bit too meandering and I get a bit bored, but Tom loves it. And when I showed him all the colorways in the collection, he was like, that one, we need that one. Um, so that is the colorway that I have picked up, which probably means that I'm gonna have to knit something for Tom out of it. Um, but it is super pretty. Um, and then I also swapped with um, Erin of Henny Penny Makes um, and I picked up from her a skein of this one here which is Jolly Holiday. Um, so Erin has just released a Mary Poppins collection um, and this one is one of her Mary Poppins collection. As I said it's called Jolly Holiday. That's super fun and colourful. I've no idea what this is going to be but it will be really pretty whatever it is. And then I also picked up a sock set, um, which is just a one of a kind, a one of a kind kind of sock set, but it was super pretty and really soft and delicate. And I thought it would do really nicely for some sort of lace socks or some pattern socks. Um, so I picked up that one. And then I did another swap with um, the Yarn Badger. And I picked up a gorgeous skein of her Compass Collective, which was the newer colourway that she'd released for East Anglia. Um, so this is another self-striping yarn. Uh, this is 100 grams and it's super pretty. Um, so I'm excited to knit that up into some socks. 
And then finally I purchased two skeins. Um, so the first one I purchased was from James Makes Yarn and it was part of his, one of his, his, what is it? It's his Beanie Baby colourway. Um, and I got this on the DK Boucle base. I've never knit with the Boucle. I don't even know what I'm going to do with this. Um, I'm thinking it might be a hat. Um, I'm thinking that might be quite a good thing, like because I think the texture would work really well in a hat. Um, so I need to have a little think and a little look and decide on a hat pattern. I'll probably just go really simple and just do a really simple kind of DK hat with this. I think it could be really fun with like a bright pom-pom on top. Um, so that's that one. Getting me out of my comfort zone and picking up a base that I wouldn't normally use, which is quite fun. And then finally I picked up this skein from the lovely Sophie at Pixie Yarns. Um, and this was her um, East Anglia colourway, it's called Yarny, and it's just the most gorgeous tonal pink. It's so, so stunning, this colour. I know this will get used as something lovely. This would work really nicely in something cabled, um, so I don't quite know what it will be yet, but it will definitely be something lovely. Um, so yeah. That is all of the yarny goodness. I know there was a fair amount, but I'm, I'm I'm kind of redeeming myself by the fact that four of those skeins were swaps and not purchases. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm saying anyway. But also, do you know what? This is my hobby and it's the thing I love. And why should I not treat myself? Sometimes we we all deserve to sometimes. Right, we are finally at the final section of the podcast and that is shop news um so there were a few things i wanted to talk about so first of all the clubs will be back up are uh, listed on the 1st of april um but it's also the start of a new quarter so the quarterly options will be listed on the 1st of april so that's april may and june if you're wanting to order quarterly our discworld club i've got no idea i'll pop this way and i'll pop them on the screen with the mood boards our Discworld Club is carrying on, obviously. Um, albums. I should have planned this in advance, shouldn't I? Where's my thing on my phone that has all of the... Discworld. Um, January, February, March, April. So April, we have the Unseen University. May, we have Nanny Og. And then June, we have Death. I am so excited about this colourway. <laughs> um, so yeah, Unseen University, Nanny Og and death so they are the next three colorways in the um discworld club and then for the rainbow mini club we are moving through into greens for april may and june i'm not going to pop up the mood boards because i'm actually going to tweak the mood boards a little bit before the listing goes live on the first of april just because um I've left April a little bit too yellow and the way that March ended up being yellow, I don't want to have two months that are very, very yellow. So I want to just tweak April's mood board to reflect the fact that it will start moving into the greens. Um, and then I need to re I need to tweak May's mood board as well. So it just, I just need to tweak the mood boards a little bit. So I won't put them on the screen right now because I probably won't get them tweaked until Monday. <laughs> um, so that is that. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was advent calendars. Now, I know it's March, and but so many people are launching already. There's a lot of people launching this weekend. There's a lot of people launching in April. I don't launch my advents for pre-order until the 1st of May, and that is going to happen the same this year. So my advents will launch on the 1st of May. The pre-orders will open. Um, I have quite a high capacity for my advents, so it shouldn't be a big panic. Um, I also offer um, payment plans. Um, it worked really well last year. We actually did them, we did four payments. So you pay the first quarter in May and then you pay June, July and August. Um, and it was nice and easy because we were able to just split the split it 25% for each one, um, which worked really easily. So I'm going to be doing that again this year. So you have the option for to take part in the payment plan or to just pay up front. I'll be offering various bases, probably similar bases to last year. So I normally offer 20 gram four ply, um, 20 gram DK, 20 gram sparkle, and then 10 gram four ply, 
Not 100% sure whether I'm going to offer 10 gram sparkle and 10 gram DK. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if they're a base that you would be interested in offering. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, yeah, I think last year, did I offer 10 gram sparkle? I think I might have offered 10 gram sparkle, but not 10 gram DK. I think I had five bases. So I had 20 gram four ply, 20 gram sparkle four ply and 20 gram DK. And then I had in 10 grams, I just had normal four ply sock and sparkle. Um, but yeah, let me know. But what is the theme? You're all wondering. Right, well, I don't have any pretty fancy images to put up yet because I'm still working on the mood boards. I've had such a busy few weeks, I just haven't quite finalised them. I haven't had time to sit down and dedicate myself to it. So I'm still working on the mood boards and I'm still working on my kind of cover image. But we are sticking for advent we are sticking with the Discworld theme and this year's advent will be a read-along advent a bit like i did with um the narnia advent a few years ago and a bit like i did with charlie and the chocolate factory a couple of years ago so the colorways will be chronological to the book so you can read along as you open up and i will put a little list in with chapters and stuff like that so that you know where you are in the book um and things like that but sticking with the Discworld theme, this year's advent calendar will be based on The Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. It seemed the perfect theme. I've not used any of The Hogfather um, as part of the club, but it's such, I mean, it's Christmas. It's Christmas in the, it's Christmas in the Discworld, isn't it? So we are going with Hogfather. Um, this year's advent will not be a fade. But what I am planning to do, I'm still, again, I'm still working on the mood board. Um, what I am planning to do is I'm going to have a, a mood board which will give you an idea as to um, what the colours will be as a whole across the advent and all the colours will be based around that mood board. It might be that some of them only use two of the colours, it might be that some of them use more of the colours, it might be that some of them use two of the colours plus a different colour that isn't in the mood board, but generally the idea is that all the colours will work together to create one really nice project that will all go together, but it won't strictly be a fade. Um, you may get a few jumps from kind of lighter colours to darker colours or you may have a colour that is slightly more variegated than a previous colour which was just speckled um, but they will all kind of, they will all fit the, the, the mood board that will exist, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a bit hard to describe because it's all just in my head at the moment. <laughs> I know what I want to do, I have ideas, I have an idea of the colours and how I want them to work, um, but yeah, it's still all very much in my head. I also can't tell you right at this moment exactly what will be included. I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna package it. The previous two years I've done bags and you've had like a printed canvas bag that the advent has come in. Um, I don't have an image to put on a bag this year. So the first year I just did my logo. Last year my logo had been revamped. So that was an easy choice to kind of do a new bag with a new logo on it. But this year I'm not 100% sure sure what I'm going to do. So I don't know whether we might go back to just having them simpler in boxes um, and maybe I'll include a few different extras in there or things like that. I'm thinking I might do a bookmark because why not? You need a bookmark to read your book with. Um, so yeah, I might, I might include a bookmark. So there might be a few small extras included but it won't be significant amounts. Um, there will be the option to add a day 25 skein because I always love doing that. Um, I'll give the option of uh, just 100 gram skeins or sock sets like I did last year. Um, they're always a great option and actually a lot of you went for it last year. So um, I will definitely kind of have that as an optional add-on. Um, and yeah, you'll find out. I mean, I'm not launching until the 1st of May, so I'm not going to have all the details fully for you right now. But there's your... There's your kind of sneak peek at our theme. We are doing the Hogfather. 
Um, I am also going to be offering a few other types of advent this year. So I will be doing a 12 days of Christmas, which will be a fade, but that won't be launching until later in the year. I can't remember whether I've put it down as August or September. It's less work. I don't get as many orders for them. So I can do that without as much preparation time needed. I'm also going to be offering a weekly advent this year with four sock sets um, because I've seen a number of people do them and I think it's a really, really nice idea. So I am going to have a themed weekly weekly advent. At the moment the plan is that that will be based around How the Grinch Stole Christmas because that is one of my favourite books that I grew up with. My dad loved it and he used to read it to us every Christmas. We read it to the boys now as well. Um, so it, I think my weekly advent is going to be based around that. So you'll get four sock sets based, each one based on something to do with How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Um, and they will be again launching later in the year because actually dyeing up sock sets is much quicker for me so I'm not too worried I don't need as much preparation time for it so they won't be launching until August September time something like that um, but yeah that's the plan if you've got any ideas I will also be doing a Christmas Eve box but again that won't be launching until September time. No need to worry about it. It's just worth mentioning now because I know as a lot of other people are opening up their orders now, it's very easy, and I've done this before, <laughs> it's very easy to kind of panic and go, oh, I really want that one. And then see other people launching later and think, oh, I wish I'd waited because actually I really want that one as well. And, you know, so I thought I will just sort of sit down and chat through what I'm planning so that you can be kind of pre-warned and prepared for what options are going to be out there. But yeah, my 12 days of Christmas, my weekly advent and my Christmas Eve box will not be launching until probably September, the beginning of September, possibly something around that kind of time anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, that was what I was going to say. If you've got any ideas of a theme for my Christmas Eve box this year, then by all means drop it in the comments because the snowman was amazing last year. The biggest response I've ever had to my Christmas Eve box and I loved putting it together. Um, and I'm trying to come up with another theme that will work just as well as the snowman did. Something that's relatively festive, relatively Christmassy. Um, so yeah. Any thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below and you may give me some ideas. I'm sure I will come up with something. I've got time. I've got plenty of time. If they're not launching until September, we've got no worries about that. Right, the final shop update thing, because this is going to be a long episode. The final shop update thing I wanted to talk about is that I was planning to have my next um, sock set and mini bundle update on the 12th of April. That is not going to be happening. Now that I'm getting the keys for the studio on Monday, I need to kind of prioritise getting that sorted. And we're also going away for a week. My plan, my hope, was that I would be able to get um, the yarn dyed up before we go away and then launch it kind of as soon as we get back but I'm not sure that's going to happen. So I've provisionally put in my diary that the shop update will be on the 19th but it may get pushed back to the 26th. Um, so just keep your eyes on social media. Um, I will send out a newsletter as well. I know on the most recent newsletter I sent out it did have the date as um, the 12th um, so that will be changing. But yeah, keep your eyes on social media. Keep your eyes on the newsletter. Um, hopefully I will sit down and record another podcast before then. Um, but it is coming. I've got three sock sets planned. I've got another bouquet mini bundle planned. And I've got another just fun, colourful mini bundle planned. Um, I know kind of roughly what I'm going to be doing for those. And I'm quite excited to share them with you. But it may not be until towards the end of April. So that's that. Oh, the one other thing I was just going to mention quickly. I've had a lot of requests for um, Beatrix Potter minis to be back in stock and also the Hobbit minis to be back in stock. Um, so I think what I may be doing um, end of April, towards the end of April, um, beginning of May, I'm not 100% sure when. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to open a pre-order for the Beatrix Potter minis, both parts one and two, and for the Hobbit minis. Um, and also possibly for my Rainbow Fade minis as well, because I've had requests for those and I know they've not been in the shop for a long time. Um, and what I'll do is I'll open a pre-order so that you can definitely get the base you want. Um, because I know there's a few people that might want it on DK and that's not something I would regularly die up for a shop update. So I will do it so that you can definitely get the base that you want to get. 
and then anything that's kind of left over because I'll still have to dye full batches um, but anything that's left over I will put in the shop as well um, but yeah I'm going to open a pre-order and do that so they'll probably go up they'll probably aim to ship at the end of May something like that so just keep your eyes on that if you are one of the many people <laughs> that has asked me about the Beatrix Bottom and Ease being back in stock um okay wow this was a long one if you have got to the end here and you are still with me then thank you very very much for your patience thank you for sitting and listening to me talk for however long I've talked for um and why not leave me some form I don't even know if it exists some form of key emoji or lock emoji or a door emoji like something that is like the idea of me getting the keys to my new studio leave me that kind of emoji in the comments down below and I will hopefully see you in a couple of weeks time it may be a little bit past a couple of weeks um, but hopefully it won't be too bad and hopefully in the interim there may be a video of me giving you a little bit of a tour of the new studio um, next week hopefully yeah Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.